Few physics theories have the ability to completely change reality like string theory. A theory of such enormous scope and ambition that it aspires to achieve the seemingly impossible task of giving a single model to describe the rules of the universe at all scales. Regardless of its scope or growing popularity, the scientific world has never agreed on its veracity and it can still be tough to comprehend for the rest of the world. Hello and welcome to Z. And today we're going to answer the astonishing question, what is string theory and how does it work? Do you require answers to the major questions? Then why not subscribe to Z for more videos like this one and ring the bell for more thought-provoking information. To put it simply, string theory seeks to characterize all particles in the universe as infinitesimally minuscule and vibrating strings. These threads are then reduced to one dimension and are thought to be the most fundamental objects in the cosmos. If this is right, then everything you are, know, see, and even think is a result of these strings. Albert Einstein presented his freshly formed field equations to the Prussian Academy of Science in 1915, more than a century ago. These equations offered a lovely depiction of how matter interacts with one another through the force of gravity. They went above and beyond Isaac Newton's work a few centuries before, explaining gravity at the highest scales in the cosmos while also predicting other phenomena such as time dilation and black holes. Since then, the model has been verified in numerous ways, and it is regarded as one of the most important theories in physics. Unfortunately, as good as it is, it isn't complete. General relativity, arguably one of the most profound contributions to physics, nevertheless does not explain how gravity interacts on the particle scale and the quantum limit. Surprisingly, gravity is the weakest of the four fundamental forces, which is maybe surprising considering that gravity literally moves planets. However, on the tiniest scales, all atomic and subatomic gravitational interactions are extremely difficult to observe. Each of the four fundamental forces has or should have a particle that is accountable for its impact. Consider the photon, which mediates electromagnetic force. The graviton is believed to be the graviton's own mediating particle. However, because of the gravitational force's relative weakness, finding the graviton is extremely difficult. So difficult, in fact, that the graviton is now solely theoretical and regarded to be impossible to observe. And this is when we come into contact with string theory. String theory was developed in the 1960s as an attempt to explain how the strong nuclear force, which is responsible for holding hadronic particles like protons and neutrons together, acts. However, the theory advanced further in the 1970s, finally aiming to describe all known particles in the standard model. Tamiaki Yonya, a Japanese physicist, found in 1974 that all varieties of string theory predicted a massless particle as well. What was even more thrilling was that this massless particle behaved exactly as predicted for the hypothetical graviton. This was monumental because no previous theory had naturally supplied an explanation for the graviton, and no other theory has since. Soon after, the distinct theory of quantum chromodynamics took over from string theory as the primary explanation of hadrons in particular. However, as string theory appeared to have bigger fish to fry in physics, its main aim switched, and it became the leading contender for explaining gravity on a quantum scale as a potential key contender for a theory of everything. So that's the backstory. But how does string theory work in practice? Again, it predicts that every particle in the standard model is, at its most fundamental, a vibrating string of the size of a Planck length, i.e., the shortest measurable distance. These strings are one-dimensional objects, and the frequency of their quantum vibrations determines the sort of particle represented by the string. From a mathematical standpoint, the theory is fantastic, giving several advances that have already been applied to numerous other branches of study. String theory, on the other hand, has historically proven to be a bit of a nightmare from a physical standpoint. 
During the 1980s, five distinct string theories were developed, with one of them requiring a mind-boggling 26 dimensions of reality to function. However, in 1995, Professor Edward Witten suggested a new version known as M-theory, which combined all five previous theories into one and predicted only 11 dimensions in total 10 spatial and one time. Meanwhile, another string theory, superstring theory, works with only nine spatial dimensions predicted, and only once, ten in total. What is obvious is that all versions of string theory require extra, unobservable dimensions. So, what or where are these additional dimensions? They're expected to be compact, very little, and coiled up. However, no one has been able to reliably explain the geometry of any of them, therefore there are practically unlimited ways in which these extra dimensions could be explained. And, quite depressingly, it appears that the more effort put into finding them out, the further string theory has deviated from working. Furthermore, there is no clear way to physically test for the presence of string theory's extra dimensions. As a result, without any mathematical validity or physical observability, the quest has come to a halt, potentially harming string theory's reputation and momentum. Many scientists now regard string theory as a premature attempt to answer the challenge of quantifying gravity. Within a few years after its proposal, general relativity was thought to be a nearly completely formed theory. Quantum field theory, the theory that explains how the fundamental particles of the universe act, on the other hand, was nowhere near as completely understood and formulated until the latter half of the century. String theory may have been similar to quantum field theory at the time, but in the decades after their discovery, quantum field theory has made tremendous progress, but string theory has floundered and fallen inert. There are also direct linkages to be formed. The fundamental tenet of quantum field theory is that all particles are described as fields rather than as concentrated point charges. A simplified version of this approach would be to imagine all particles as clouds rather than smooth spheres. The most important offshoot here, though, is something known as an effective field theory. This is an intuitive approach of making particle calculations, among other things, without knowing the exact details of the physical processes they're describing. Effective fields are then free of the mathematical constraints that prevented Einstein from quantifying gravity. There has been tremendous progress in formalizing general relativity into an effective field theory over the last decade. Finally, I'll describe how gravity operates at the quantum level. So, how does this affect string theory? Its history is complicated, and its future is hazy. String theory has never been a single theory, and there has never been widespread agreement on which one is best. Furthermore, many of the researchers that pioneered string models are now working in related domains, attempting to look at quantum gravity from new angles. String theory-based tools, on the other hand, remain extremely effective. Calculations on how gravitons scatter off one other, for example, have been done exclusively with string-based approaches. Regardless of string theory's seeming failure to produce a single formal theory of everything, its contributions and advances in mathematics should not be overlooked or underappreciated. After all, it is still the only theory that can naturally predict a graviton, as contrast to the myriad of alternative theories, such as loop quantum gravity, which have never achieved the same accomplishment. String theory does not have the same clout it formerly did in modern physics, but its impact remains considerable. Beauty can still be found within it, as it predicts that even the most powerful forces in the universe are, at their core, simple, fundamental threads. In the future, there is a potential that we will discover a new version of the theory that is free of the flaws of previous attempts. Today's field research is sparse, but there are still dedicated teams working to make progress. It's possible that we simply don't have the necessary mathematical tools right now, but with time, we might build them. String theory may also one day solve or contribute to the solution of some of physics' other fundamental issues, such as the enigma of dark matter, according to some. What do you believe will occur? Do you believe that, at its vibrating, stringy core, 
this model can still be the answer to everything? Or is there another, completely new idea on the horizon that we have yet to imagine? What are your thoughts? Is there anything we left out? Let us know in the comments and don't forget to subscribe and ring the bell to stay up to date on our latest content.